Washed in His Blood, Prophetic Insights on Spiritual and National Freedom. I was given a strong and encouraging word from the Lord to add to the Exodus and Beyond blog series. The last time the Lord spoke to me for this particular subject was November 10th, 2022. So I was excited to hear from him, Exodus 6, 6. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression, and I will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. During a time of self-reflection and repentance with the Lord, I experienced a vision of the Nile River. The Holy Spirit has shown me this river before, often in connection with Moses, but this time it was different. In my vision, I found myself standing in the midst of the Nile River, dressed in a simple white gown. The water shimmered under the sunlight as I splashed the translucent red blood of Jesus over myself. Revelation 7.14 These are the ones coming out of the Great Tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Suddenly, the river was filled with dead bodies. I was shocked to see the bodies floating past me down the Nile. This vision reminds me of various prophetic words I've received over the last four years about floods, floods that carry people away. Jesus is calling both believers and unbelievers into the river of repentance. Those who repent and are washed in his blood receive the incomprehensible gift of having their sins washed away and becoming spotless in the eyes of God. For believers who have humbled themselves and live a repentant life, this is a season of upgrade and fulfillment of design promises and purposes. In contrast, evildoers, oppressors, warmongers, pedophiles, and those who hate God will be overwhelmed by the consequences of their own sins. Their evil deeds will be exposed for all to see. They will be brought low and hang their heads in shame as they plunge into this time of downfall for Satan and his followers. What a stark contrast between good and evil, clean and unclean, saved and imprisoned. Romans 5, 8-9 through 9. But God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then shall we be saved from the wrath of God, having now been justified by his spotless blood? John eight twenty three, Jesus said to them, You are from below, I am from above. You belong to this world, I do not. I told you that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. A Declaration for the Evil Tyrants By this you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water of the Nile, and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die, and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. Our current state. In Exodus chapter 3, God appears to Moses as a blazing fire in the center of a bush. In verse 7, the Lord said to him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of the harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 10. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. In chapter 5, we see that instead of obeying God and freeing his people, Pharaoh and the Egyptian slave drivers increased the burden on the Israelites. They withheld straw for brick-making, forcing the people to work even harder. In verse 9, Pharaoh orders, Load them down with more work. Make them sweat. That will teach them to listen to lies. 
the slave drivers became even more brutal, beating God's people and intensifying their oppression. Oppressed. This story parallels with what our country is experiencing today. We are heavily burdened with our constitutional freedoms at risk. Those who speak out or stand up against tyranny are often silenced or punished. Some have been imprisoned or ostracized by family. Many have lost their jobs and others have been removed from positions of influence. They are labeled as domestic threats and terrorists, conspiracy theorists, and tinfoil hat conspirators and are subjected to relentless gaslighting. The straw. Work harder to have less seems to be the mantra. Food prices have increased by 25 to 30%, driven by supply chain issues, supposedly. Rent has risen by 33.6% in just the past three years. Approximately 4.9% of the workforce now holds two or more jobs just to make ends meet. The BRICS. Our national debt stands at $33 trillion, with interest payments of approximately $1.8 billion per day. This debt is passed on to us through taxes. As of mid-2024, the United States has spent around $75 billion in taxpayer dollars to support Ukraine in their defense. NATO, an alliance of 31 countries, is responsible for the collective defense of its members. Yet Ukraine is not a member of NATO. Why then are we funding their war? And more importantly, who stands to gain? 1 Timothy 6.10 For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. Make them sweat. Did you know that every dollar we earn is taxed about four times over? In addition, we are burdened with ongoing taxes, fees, and licenses for nearly everything. There are over 1,100 different occupational licenses required at the state level alone. Beyond that, thousands of permits and licenses are required for various activities, businesses, and events. They vary in each state. But a few examples are lemonade stands, bingo collar, hair braiding, dog walking, and a fishing license for seniors. Nehemiah 5.4 We have borrowed money for the king's tax on our fields and our vineyards. Now our flesh is as the flesh of our brothers, and our children are as their children. Contempt Pharaoh had no knowledge of Jehovah, no fear of him, and no love for him, which is why he refused to obey God. In a similar way, our current government shows contempt for God through its promotion of woke ideology and the push towards Marxism. At its core, socialism is about replacing God with government and trading freedom for tyranny. Yet in all these things, God has seen and heard. The day of justice is near. Exodus 3.19 And the Lord said, But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. Then at last he will let you go. And I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you. And they will give you gifts when you go so that you will not leave empty-handed. Every Israelite woman will ask for articles of silver and gold and fine clothing from her Egyptian neighbors and from the foreign women in their houses. And you will dress your sons and daughters with these, stripping the Egyptians of their wealth. Food and Health Concerns Is the FDA really an advocate for our health? Well, they haven't earned my trust. On my own journey, I've started paying closer attention to the labels on products I once thought were safe. Bioengineered foods are becoming more common, appearing in many everyday items. Interestingly, there are other countries that have banned certain American foods. 
Here's a brief list of U.S. food products that face import restrictions in other countries due to safety concerns and health regulations. Number one, hormone-treated beef. Many countries, including the European Union, have strict regulations to protect consumer health and ensure food safety. Number two, genetically modified organisms, GMOs. The U.S. produces a large amount of GMO crops, such as corn and soybeans, which are restricted in many nations. Number three, chlorinated chicken. The U.S. uses a method of washing poultry with chlorinated solutions, a practice banned in the European Union. Number four, certain food additives. Artificial colorings like red number 40, which are allowed in the U.S. are banned in countries like Norway and Australia due to potential health risks. Medical tyranny. In 1950, there were only three recommended immunizations for children, totaling five shots. By 2024, there are 14 recommended immunizations, including flu and COVID vaccines starting at six months and repeated annually. A child today could receive between 56 to 62 immunizations by age 18. The autism diagnosis rate was one in 10,000 children in the 1950s. By 1980, it rose to one in 2,000. In the year 2000, it jumped to one in 150. According to the CDC's latest statistics from 2023, it is now one in 36. But of course, this has nothing to do with the vaccines. Pharmaceuticals have side effects, many of which are far more serious than the issues they are attempting to treat. Ezekiel 47, 12. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. Jesus, the great physician, has created many herbs, leaves, and foods for our healing. The latest documentary in a series that sheds light on vaccine injuries and in the importance of informed food consent. The episode is called Vaxxed 3 on the Dr. Artist Show, and I'll put a link below for you. We are living in a time where government overreach, economic strain, and health-related concerns have intensified, from increased taxation and unnecessary licensing, to the rise of bioengineered foods and mounting medical mandates. The parallels to historical oppression are clear. Like Pharaoh and his slave drivers, our current system shows contempt for God, pushing ideologies that replace faith with control. Yet, as in the days of Moses, God sees and hears the cries of his people. Wash your garments and rend your hearts before the Lord, for the day of justice is approaching, and a bitter end awaits those who practice evil. Jesus said, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. John 16,